boy, I tell you what, this market is something else. Welcome to today's live trading and back testing with me, your host, Christopher Ewell, founder and head trader from 10minutestocktrader.com. This has been a week, right? Today, we will be talking about uh, what's going on in the market. We will also be talking about um, what is not in our portfolio and the, the defense that we played this week. Then at the end of today's episode, we will be doing live backtesting on your favorite stocks. So I need you right now to type in two things for me into the chat box. Type in what was your best pick of the week? The one pick where you were like, murdered it, put that in my bank account. I am on fire. The one you want to brag about. And then put in the chat and you can do it like anonymously, I guess, or, or something like that, but like kind of like whisper it into the chat. The one that stole your lunch money because nobody wants to brag about those, but it does make some great content to backtest those. So do me a favor, put those two in the chat and we will be right back to start the show. This is the How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast brought to you by 10MinuteStockTrader.com, where we cover finance, stocks, options, entrepreneurship, education, and money. And here's your host, voted one of the top 100 people in finance, Christopher Ewell. Mm, thank you guys for coming back to today's live trading and backtesting. Uh, I'm very fortunate that Benzinga continues to let me come back on the show. Uh, if you find this kind of content useful and helpful, I need you to smash the like button. That way Benzinga knows that you're enjoying this as well. But also I would highly, highly recommend you come and check out the podcast that we do three days a week. The easiest way to watch that podcast is by going into your YouTube search bar or you're at right now, type in 10 minute stock trader, and then you'll see my face smiling right back at you. And while you're there, I would super highly encourage you to go check out this video right here where it says 100% winners. Uh, this is only going to be up until Monday. On Monday, it comes down because this is a private lesson that I put out onto uh, the internets in order to kind of foster some goodwill, but also because I want you to, to check it out. And it's really, honestly, it's a private lesson for the members of my 10-minute trading room, but I want you to go and check it out. Um, like I say, it, it is a private lesson. It is coming down on Monday. And um, if you haven't already seen it, this might change your life. Uh, not to toot my own horn or anything, but do go check that out. The easiest way to do that is typing in 10 minute stock trader in your YouTube bar and finding that video that says 100% winners right there. Speaking of 100% winners, we don't have any of those this week, do we? Oh my gosh, what happened? Is that for real? That is not what I saw five minutes ago. Hang on. That was an honest reaction. Oh, geez. So I don't normally trade off the news. And I don't think you should either. I think you should develop a trading plan and then enact that plan based on price. But good holy moly, what just happened here? Okay. So in the 10-minute trading room, which is where you can find me, um, we got out of all positions, um, uh, last Friday and I was telling the members over there, I was like, listen, I think this market has a lot of issues right now. Huge issues. The way that I trade and the way that my trading mentors taught me was that a bullish posture is when the 10 day exponential moving average is above the 20 day exponential moving average and price is above the 50 day. So in shorthand, that's the blue line over the black line and price over the red line. I once saw this, uh, this TikToker, and he was like, the market will do this when a mar indicator does that. Like he was saying that the indicator tells the market what to do instead of saying that the indicator just reads what the price is doing. So I don't want you to think that any indicator out there is telling you what the market is going to do. But I am telling you that right now, I am set up for bears. 
Welcome to Bear Town, because that's what this is. Does that mean that everything out there is going to go to hell? No. Nah. And in fact, I don't short the market. I like to short individual names inside of the market. So if you're going to be looking to go short, I would be looking at the names and not the market itself. Now, with that out of the way, whoo wee tell you what, let's take a look at the MMFI. Now, the MMFI, this gives you an idea of how many stocks are above or below their 50-day moving average. And the 50-day moving average is just like that red line, but for each individual stock. 24, I'll be generous, I'll round it up, 25% of the S&P 500 is in a bullish posture. Mr. Higgles, I disagree with you. If you like to bottom fish, this may be for you. But I like my money. I don't like it when the market steals it from me. We may be looking at a scenario. Hang on, got to scroll back. Like the corona crash last year. I'm not saying we are. I'm saying we may be. And the only thing to do right now is hold on to your cash because you enjoy it and you love it and you worked hard for that money. But conservatively looking at short positions and being very, 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 very tight on your risk. Because the biggest rallies ever happen in bear markets. I know it's contrary, right? But you will find days just like this one, right? Ja. Okay, from the close of the prior day, let me zoom in just a little bit. From the close of the prior day to the top close of the next day was an 8.5% rally. If you're trading this short, you have to be exceptionally, extremely agile. So I don't want to beat that horse to death, but uh, this is what we are going to be doing. And uh, if you're looking to go long right now, now is not the time to be doing so. But what it is time to be doing is going to the chat box. Let's take a look. I'm going to assume you go by Shelly, because I don't think it's Shelly, like Chris. So I'm going to say Shelly Serrano. This has been a week, all right. Yeah, for sure. So you had some good luck on Jimmy Puts, Spy Puts, and UVXY Calls. That's a good combo. Where do hedges rotate cash in a day like these? It's a good question. I will tell you one thing. The big market movers come to town in the last hour of trading. They literally have to make their moves and they have a 45 to 30 minute window at the end of the day to make these moves happen. If you were trading on early this morning, you would have thought that the market was going up to infinity. Because earlier on in the day, we were up, we were up 2% earlier on in the day. And look at where we closed. We closed down 1%. So I don't know where they're rotating their cash, but I do know one thing. You can see what they're doing if you just wait till the end of the day. I paid a lot of money in wrong trades where I got stopped out the same day because of this. Unless you're day trading, then you do you. But I don't. I position trade. Um, Thank you for that. Excellent question. Jim Cruz. Riven in the bank. Oh, and then lunch. Oh, I know it, dude. AMD too. Hang on. I want to do this. Uh, I'm going to put these in my saved list so I don't lose them. So GME. I'm in my list all real quick because I don't want to lose them. And then UVXY, and then RIVN. And do me a favor, if you haven't already spammed the chat box, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Let's do this thing. And smash like. That way Benzinga knows. Uh, let's see. Is HOD something? No, HOD is not something. He's being silly. Okay. 
let's do this. We have gone through. Oh, HOD is Canadian. Okay, thank you for that. I'm not. I'm Texan. <laughs> Texan is its own thing. All right. So I don't have anything in my portfolio to review. I don't have any new trade setups to talk about today. I I'm gonna go straight to audience requests. We are gonna we're gonna we're gonna knock this out. Ooh ooh ooh! Morg's coming in. Himram and uh, SVM. There we go. Silver court medals. Cool. Awesome. We got a handful to go through. So what I want to do here is I am going to put just a couple of indicators on here to give me a better perspective as to what's happening. And then I will go through and I will backtest all of these stocks in my list. And oh, a couple more just came through. Hang on. I don't want to forget because sometimes I get so excited and I get off topic. And then Bunny Mitch is in my ear. He's like, Chris, get on top. You got 30 seconds left. I'm like, oh, dang gum. I got to get back to work. Uh, I don't call this work. This is the greatest thing in the world. I don't know if you feel that way. This, like when my mama birthed me, neither one of us knew that I would be a trader. But once I found this out, I tell, I tell you what, this is all I can think about. All day and all night. And I'm so blessed because I've had the chance to talk to God, the, the most incredible traders in the world. Billion dollar hedge fund managers giving me tools, tips, and tricks on how to trade. Yeah, game over. All right. I got my list filled in. Everybody on here has put in their list so far. Um, I'm going to just jump these on here so you guys know I am doing my best to take care of you and I really appreciate the audience interaction I would also appreciate it if you would smash like now like right now hit like all right cool so let's do this we're gonna first look at spy at the SPY we're gonna look at a strategy test and we're gonna do a short over and under the 10 day exponential moving average. So what I'm trying to tell you is the entry is when it goes below the blue line, the exit would be the opposite when it goes back above the blue line. This is trend trading. Uh, one of my trading mentors, he talked about how um, you can get on a trend that's going from five to a hundred. You can get on it anytime. The staircase is going up. You're, the escalator's there. You can go ahead and get on but you need to know where you're going to get off. So if your risk is a dollar, $4, 50 cents, you have to determine that risk. But if the, if the trend is going one way, get on at any point. You don't have to worry about getting on at that precise crossover as long as you manage your risk. So let's hit run. Now, like I said, this is a short entry. What does this look like? If you shorted the S&P 500, so I'm going to give you some criteria here. When it says chart, that means the last year. It even says it right here. Data analyzes one year. In my opinion, if you're going to go short, you have to really crunch in your time frame to know exactly if this is working today. Because you don't need to know what happened in 1992. You don't need to know what happened in uh, 2014. You need to know in 2021, is this strategy valid? Yes or no? For the SPY, the answer is no. Let's talk about this and then apply this logic to everything that we go through. If you put on this strategy, this strategy lost 21% cumulatively over the course of the last year. That's, that's no es bueno. But if you came in a year ago at this point, the market, if you can believe it, is up 43% from a year ago to, uh, what was this? October, September 30th, 2020. That's when it started. Can you believe that? 43%? Good gravy. No wonder you lost money. Anyway, what we're going to focus on is this number here because this is going to tell you the cumulative results for your strategy. And then additionally, we're going to focus on this blue line and blue cloud because this is going to give us a projection. It's, it's, it's literally this 
projection right here mapped out and the future on the chart. This tells us the blue line, our average result using this strategy, and the blue cloud gives us our bottom 25% and upper 75% um, percentile, I should say. So this should give you a really good observation on what it looks like going forward. You can see here, uh, it don't look good. <laughs> I mean, conservatively, you could say that, yeah, it's out. It's it's not performing well inside of its back test, but realistically, you could say it just fell out of its back test. Even if this is your strategy, I would not put this on because you are basically expecting to lose. I'm not saying that's going to happen in the future, but I'm saying that right now, this strategy is broken on the SPY. That's okay. That just means you got to go somewhere else to do it. So I was looking at AMC, which is down like 11% today. And once again, the back test shows it is going to head in this direction. Um, but also, if you ran this strategy, you would be down on the year. Now, this is going short. Can't even look at going long now. It's below its 200-day moving average. If you take nothing away from today, just take away that the 200-day moving average is the easiest line in the sand to draw to say if something's bullish or bearish. And this is as bearish as it comes right now. All right, so let's go through here. Um, going back to Shelly's notes on here. So she had puts in GameStop. She had puts in SPY, and she had calls in UVXY. Now, either you're an incredible market timer, or you're pulling my strings here. I don't know. But I do know that going short on the back test for GME is negative 77%. So you're beating the back test, that's for sure. UVXY calls, on the other hand, so this is an inverse ETF, right? No, 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 no. This is a multiple on, hey, Shelly, what is the multiple on this? Is it two times on the uh, on the VIX? Tell me that real quick. I just want to double check. So going long on UVXY probably doesn't read very well. Yeah, negative 67%. Because this is meant to go down. Like this has been reverse split I don't know how many times, but if you just zoom out, like you have to continue to move your scale horribly bad. So if you are in a trade like UVXY, you have to get in and out very quickly. All right, so let's continue on here. Riven. Rivian Automotive. Now, this is not had much data. So unfortunately, no matter what I test, how many trades do we have? This is less than a month worth of data. I mean, honestly, I can't even back test that. Uh, we could do it like on a sub daily time frame, um, but unfortunately, there's just not enough data points to do. But we could talk about it for a second. Right now, it's talking to its 10 day, but it's below its 10 day. And I mean, really, it's been going sideways for the last week or so. It's $115 stock. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on this one, Jim. I wish I did. My opinion on this one is I would wait until uh, the market tells us where it's going to go with it. Because it could be a fantastic stock. But if the market's breaking down, then it's not going to overcome the market, period. Just nothing it can do. But AMD, that's been around for a while. We could talk about that one. AMD was one of my best trades of the year, in fact. I caught this move from 95 to 115, and it was awesome. Do you want to know the power of a backtest? Type in the chat. Yes, Chris, I want to know the power of the backtest. Now you don't have to do that. But look at this. This is why I do this. Look at how beautifully this has gone in its backtest. Gorgeously. It's almost as if I drew it after the fact. No. This gets drawn on there beforehand. And then the price continued to run inside of it. Yeah. All right. But today's price uh, fell out of it. What is that? Negative 
0.787%. Yeah, rough, rough day. Um, this would be the exit point. I don't know if you're still holding it, but today would have been the exit point because it broke out of this 10-day moving average that he has not broken out of since October 7th. I, I mean, anything can happen, obviously. But today would have been the exit point on this one. So, Jim, I hope you booked your profits. I do. I really do. All right. Mr. Higgles, uh, SVM. Okay, so SVM is not looking super hot. This one is down 3.7% on the day. Let's do look at a short entry. Still on a short entry, look at that beautiful, how it's moving inside there. Do you see that? However, the data shows that this would result in a negative cumulative return. I mean, let's just throw out a thousand candles. A 94% negative return. This is one of those stocks where it's like, hey, the setup is cool. The back test shows something awesome. But cumulatively, it shows I would lose money on this strategy. So I would avoid it. And keep in mind, at a $3.84 stock, I would bet that you loaded up on this. I don't know you, but I would bet that you did. And you may have taken on a bigger size than you normally would have if this was a $115 ribbon stock. Uh, so I would be extra careful on that. Mr. Eagles, thank you. I appreciate you, by the way. All right. Um, MRAM was next. I got to find where MRAM was in. MRAM. All right. So we can go bullish on this one. Over and under the 10-day. You're not going to believe this. So MRAM has been a pretty low price stock for a hot, hot minute. Then it exploded up. And look at how beautifully it's tracking in its back test since that point. It's like I do witchcraft all day long. Yeah, this one's cool. Uh, however, today it did close below its 10 day. So today would have been the exit point. But it did follow really, really well in that back test. And unfortunately, the market's working against it. If you're long anything right now, you're fighting the tide. So just be careful on that. Uh, oh, man, I just looked at the time. I cannot believe time flies when you're having so much fun. I'll tell you. Uh, hang on. I'm, I really am running out of time, so I got to make sure. Oh, cool. I'm nearly done. Frederick, how are you, sir? Hope you're doing well on this fine Wednesday afternoon. We're taking a look at Lucid for you, sir. Every time I see this, it brings a smile to my face. Because look at that back test and look at how it's performed. Am I a broken record? Yeah. When Mark Minervini, he's a friend of mine, he actually, he texted me on Thanksgiving and uh, I didn't even realize he texted me until Monday. And I'm like, oh shit, Mark, Mark texted me. I got to text him back. Uh, when he was being interviewed for Market Wizards, um, you know, he was a 1997 uh, U.S. investing champion. And Jack Schwager, who I've also had. I've had both of them on the podcast. Shameless plug. Go check it out. Type in 10-minute stock trader. Uh, so when he was interviewed by Jack Schwager, Jack stopped the recording and he said, Mark, everything you're telling me is the same thing that everybody else has. And Mark looked at him straight fast and he goes, that's because it works. So I'm telling you the same thing over and over because this is what works. Not financial advice. But this one, going long lucid, 626% return, beating the stock of just four of just 428% return. But again, this would have been the exit point today. I keep stressing that because if you're following the strategy above and below the 10 day, one simple line. If you're following the strategy, it did close below here. So as exciting as it's been following this move, if you trade like I do and you have an unbreakable trading plan, that's what I call it because you've got to have an unbreakable plan. 
Otherwise, you don't know what you're doing. You're just hoping and wishing. If you have an unbreakable trading plan and you see that it closed below this, this is the day you take your profits. That's just how it goes. Good, bad, or otherwise, I have two left. I have shop. Wow, 303% return. Ooh, but this one got wrecked in the last week. Wow, it's so expensive too, 1459. Yeah, I don't trade stocks like, I, unless I'm doing spreads, like a call spread, I don't trade a $1,459 stock long. Uh, yeah, because that's just, that ties up so much capital. But in this case, um, yeah, long looks good. If we were to go short it, because this is much more likely a short candidate to me, under and over the 10 day, still shows a negative 39% return. So this is not really a shortable stock to me. And that's what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks is the market's going to be set up for shorting, but there's going to be a lot of names that are not shortable by puts or maybe a call spread or a put spread or a short stock because the data does not prove out that the strategy will work. And to me, I'm a data-driven guy, so I got to know that. Last and not least, Lumos with DDS. Dillard's, I don't know about you, but my mom, my mom's in her, how old is she? She's, uh, she's 75. Dillard's is like her favorite place. Like she gets all dressed up. She's excited about it. She's listening right now. So I know she's smiling. Um, but yeah, she gets, she gets all excited to go to Dillard's. Dillard's is her place. Maybe your mom's is too. Smash like if that's your mom's favorite place. But this is not at all a short candidate for me because look at how the back-tested results map out going forward. It's really flat. So while this did get crushed in the last few days, this is not a short candidate for me. The short position would have lost 69% cumulatively. So yeah, I mean, it's been a crazy market this week, without a doubt. And I appreciate you guys all putting all the uh, guys and ladies putting in what you had traded this week in the chat. Because, you know, that's important. It's it's important to talk about our wins. And honestly, to me, I think it's way more important to talk about our losses because we can learn and adjust and turn those losses. Hopefully one day, the lesson we lost, the dang, yeah, I messed it up. Hopefully turn those dollars that we lost into a valuable lesson. And in the future, use that to work for you. So now on to our final thoughts. Oh, wrong button. No, it's still not the right button. I want it big side by side. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'm really trying to find the right button. <laughs> this will work. Okay. Even if you fall on your face, you're still moving forward. That's a very profound quote. But seriously, think about it for a minute, right? When you... Let's go back to 1988. Imagine, you know, it's Christmas and you just opened uh, the, the present under the tree that your parents were kind of hiding from you and you open it up and it was that brand new Nintendo Entertainment System. And you're like, oh, no way, I got a Nintendo. And you're jumping up and down. Your dad's got the, you know, the enormous camcorder and he's watching you and shaking all around. And, and every once in a while, your dad brings out the videotapes and embarrasses you in front of your family and friends for that day. But you were so excited. You could smell that plastic straight from Japan and you got it and you hooked it up to the TV in the extra bedroom because, you know, your parents aren't going to let you put it on the living room. And you get that rectangle remote in your hand and you're like, here, here I come, Mario. Get ready. And you start playing Mario, and you lose. You're like, oh, no big deal. And you start playing Mario again, and you get like half a level up, and those stupid little turtles, they take you out again. You're like, ah, dang them. Start over. And you're going along, and you're jumping, and then you finally get to the flag, and you slide down the flag, and you look at your brother, you're like, boo! We got this. Right? You fell on your face, but you still moved forward. And that's exactly the same in trading. 
if you lose, that is an opportunity for you to learn. Let that be your lesson of the day. How did I lose? Why did I lose? What could I have done differently? Was it my entry point? Was it my exit point? Was it my position size? Was it my trading psychology? Was it me being greedy or was it me being fearful? There's so much to think about. But the point is, is that even if you fall on your face, this is the chance for you to learn. And if you learn, then you're still moving forward. And when you're moving forward, only great things can happen. So thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. I got to tell you, this is one of my favorite, favorite things of the week. And I cannot wait to see you next time. And in fact, next time is just around the corner because Money Mitch said I could come on his show. Yes. But real quick before I go, if you don't have a chance to stick around and watch Money Mitch's show with me, I want you to first go to your, your YouTube search bar, type in 10 Minute Stock Trader at the top, come subscribe, check us out there. And please, please watch this video before it comes down because this is a private members only lesson. And legitimately, I'm only keeping it up till Monday and then it's gone forever. And I don't want you to miss out. So thank you again so much for letting me come hang out with the Zingers. This is so much fun to do every week. And uh, I hope to see you here next time slash in just a minute with Money Mitch. This is the How to Trade Stocks Options podcast brought to you by 10MinuteStockTrader.com where we cover finance, stocks, options, entrepreneurship, education, and money. And here's your host, voted one of the top 100 people in finance, Christopher Ewell.